Thanks everybody for coming. I'm Luke Humphrey. I'm a program manager in the Microsoft product project product group um, based in Redmond. And today I'm going to demo Project Online for everybody, which is part of Office 365. What's going on, Tad? And I do have some of these and some Bluetooth speakers to give out at the end for people that walk up here and ask for them. <laughs> so. <laughs> Probably too, too hard to like ask questions and all that, but I'll also answer questions. Um, okay, so in this scenario, we have Lydia, who's a project and portfolio manager. She works for Contoso. She wants to digitally transform Contoso. So she has a bunch of projects and portfolios she's managing. She logs into Office 365, which you see here every day. She wants to leverage the project and portfolio management capabilities of Office 365. To do that, she clicks on the project tile here. And this will bring us to the project web app homepage. And I assume everything's yes, OK. And Project Online is made up of the project web app and the des project desktop client. And they both work together, and they all work with Office 365. So on the homepage, she can see these tiles here that give her actions that she may need to take, a, like looking at issues and risks, looking at new tasks, making approvals, etc. And if we scroll down, Lydia can also see portfolio level metrics around cost, schedule, risk, things like that, and a nice pretty report here that is powered by Power BI. So Power BI can be embedded in the any page in Project Web App. And we just released a content pack where we have a ton of resource project and portfolio reports that you get for free out of the box and they're interactive. So if I click on one of these slices of one of the charts, it's been a little bit slow due to the network, I think. But the idea is all of the other metrics and charts are then filtered by whatever you click on here. So all the reports are interactive. I'll show you more of those if we have time at the end. It's a 20 minute demo. Um, so Lydia can also see the projects that she cares about by going to the project center. So in the project center, we have this high level timeline that sort of keeps track of the big deliverables for her digital transformation effort. And we can see, for example, that by the end of the year, they want to do an initial deployment or around that effort and have that be complete. If we scroll down, and this is totally configurable, if we scroll down, we can see all the projects she cares about, and she can get an idea of health of these projects by looking at these red, yellow, green KPIs. So she can see stuff that's on schedule and under budget, and also stuff that's having issues that may be off schedule and maybe going over budget. If she wants to make sure all her data is up to date, she may have approvals for updates from people working on her project that she can look at. So if I click on approvals as the approval center, she can see any update coming through from team members on, on projects that she cares about, review them, and then uh, make sure the schedules are all up to date. If after doing that she still needs help, we can look across resources by going to the Resource Center. So this will list all the resources that Lydia can see, and she can select people that she wants to drill in on. We have some pre-selected here, and I can hit this Capacity Planning button and we'll start by looking at this resource utilization chart. So you get a lot of visualizations out of the box related to um, resources. In this case, we have the bars by month, these resources, and we can spot areas where they can take on more work and then areas where they may be over allocated. So that can initiate some load balancing conversations. Um, another view here would be resource availability where we can see again by month, and the colors represent resources, who has availability, and then who may be being overworked. So Ben could probably use some help. So again, this could initiate load balancing conversations. So while Lydia is working on these projects, she also wants to keep in mind how the projects align to their strategy as an organization. So we have a set of features that allow you to manage your strategic objectives and then how projects align to those. So if I click on driver library in the left, I see our strategic objectives here and you want these to be actionable, measurable and unique. And this basically are the goals of your organization. So we have empower your employees, transform your projects, etc. 
we drill into these, the idea is that the leadership needs to come to consensus on what these are and what their priority is. And then each proposal that comes through the pipe needs to be rated against these on this five point scale. So this one is empower all employees. So when a project comes through and is rated against here, it can have no impact on that strategic objective up to an extreme impact, which means it's really moving the dial on that business driver. Um, and you define what each of these mean. Now, not all drivers are created equally. So the idea is that you want to prioritize your business drivers. To do that, leadership sits in a room and they rate the relative importance of each driver against, against each other driver. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you get leadership in a room and you go through this exercise where we have a driver here on the left, empower your employees. How important is empowering your employees relative to engaging your customers? And you get to choose from the seven point scale from is extremely more important than to extremely less important than. And the real value in this is not necessarily a tool, it's the conversations that come out of going through this exercise. So we've used this at Microsoft on uh, several teams and it really helps leadership get on the same page in terms of what they believe their strategy is and not just what the business drivers are, but how important they are. So after you rate every driver against every other driver, it spits out a relative priority score which in this case, we're saying that empowering your employees is the most important by that factor and optimizing your operations is still important, but relatively less important. Now why this is, I guess, important is that um, when you align your projects to these drivers, the projects that will have more impact on the more important drivers should be prioritized higher in general. Um, so this gives you the framework to do that. Okay, so now that we have the strategy defined, um, we can look at how stuff comes in the pipe. So one of the cool things about being part of Office 365 is you can do things like create a, a SharePoint list for capturing ideas. So in Contoso, Lydia has created this list where employees can come in and, and log a bunch of ideas and then talk about them and rate them. And then some of the better ideas can become proposals which compete against other proposals for selection. And part of that selection process is based on how they align with the, the strategy. So proposals are, can come in many different flavors. These are all templates that you can configure to meet your organization's needs. So examples are application development following a traditional waterfall style. There could be infrastructure proposals, construction proposals that'll deal with vendors and a, and a lot of external stuff. Um, but all of these can follow a workflow that you define and you can capture all sorts of different information um, depending on the type of proposal that you care about. So let's say that we wanted to upgrade the conference rooms at Contoso because it takes a long time to get people set up when they have meetings. So maybe we want to install Surface Hubs in all of our conference rooms at Contoso. So I could create a new infrastructure project. And this gives me basically a business case form. Then this is totally customizable as well that I can fill out to make my case for why we should add Surface Hubs to all conf rooms. And you can add whatever fields you want here. You can make it as simple or, or as comprehensive as you'd like. And when I hit finish, this will kick off a workflow for this proposal that will go through a review cycle. It will compete against other proposals. And I'll show you how we do selection based on that strategic alignment. Um, and then ultimately it may be selected and then go through execution, which you can manage the schedule, the resource planning, all of that stuff, all part of Project Online. So once this quits spinning, we'll see sort of a, a diagram that shows where the project is at in the workflow and the, the subsequent stages that it may go through depending on if it's approved or not. Just building suspense here. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. So. This is sort of the visualization coming up. So we're in the initial business case phase that's now going to turn to being reviewed. So this just kind of gives you a picture of the workflow this project will go to. And it could be a simple workflow. Maybe somebody just needs to review it, and then it's approved, and then it's an execution. Or it can be as complicated as you want it. 
So that's another thing about Project Online. It has a lot of depth and a lot of really powerful features, but you don't have to use all of those, especially not right away. Like It's best to start simple. But the idea is this one would then go through approval like all the other proposals. And now I'll show you a way that you, you can leverage to select which projects you should be investing in using the portfolio analysis feature set. So I'll click on portfolio analysis. Now this gives you a framework for investing in the projects that'll yield the most value based on all of those business drivers that you defined. So the idea here is to add some objectivity or rigor to how you select projects versus sort of just doing it how you've always done or doing it based on pet projects or other more emotional means to, to doing project selection. It really anchors you in picking the projects that align with your strategy. So if I click on prioritize projects, we'll see the business drivers that we saw earlier on top. So that's your strategy. And the projects are each of those rows. So those rows are then going to compete for funding. And they all have impact ratings assigned. And the idea here is that the, the projects that have higher impact on the drivers you've said are more important should be deemed as more valuable projects that you should really try to invest in. So Lydia, if she wants, she can change these. If she thinks somebody's being too generous with how they've rated the impact ratings, she can do that here. But the idea is there's an algorithm that will assign a priority value to each project based on those ratings. So in this case, the laser scanning system is the most important project or the one that aligned most strongly to your strategic objectives. So you'd want to try to invest in that. Whereas the DNA analysis system is the least important, but still adds value. Like anything in, in the positive adds value. Now, ideally you want to do everything so you can get the maximum value out of all the proposals that are, that are up for funding. But, you know, we live in a world of constraints. We don't have, you know, all the resources we want. We don't have all the money we want. We don't have all the time we want. So if I did everything, what this next analyzed cost page is showing you is that if I did all these projects, I would get maximum value, which is 100%, but it's going to cost me $2 million. So I don't have $2 million. Maybe I only have $750,000. So I can type that in here, hit recalculate, and the tool is going to suggest projects you should invest in given your $750,000 constraint based on the amount of value they'll give you relative to their cost. So it's going to favor projects that give you high value that are cheap or lower cost. So in this case, if you only had $750,000, it would suggest you do these two projects if you wanted to get the highest value. Now, of course, it's just a tool. You can make override decisions. It's just sort of helping you provide more of a more rigor, more of an um, objective methodology to how you do these investments. Now, let's say, for example, that we had to do this core, core drilling tool project to stay out of jail. It's like a regulatory project. You can do things like force projects in. And then when you recalculate, it's going to respect that you said you have to do that project. It's going to respect that you said you only had $750,000 to spend and it's going to select projects still trying to maximize the value here. So it's going to move the one you forced in in and it's going to push this guy out. But it's always trying to maximize value. Now you can also do um, selection analysis based on resource availability. I don't have time to go into that today but um, that's something I encourage everybody to, to take a look at. That's where you can sort of look at what's, what resources you have available by skill and then what projects are asking for. And it's still going to take into account maximizing which projects you should invest in based on their strategy alignment. Um, so I guess the final thing to show you would be some, some dashboards that we now have in Power BI. So let me click on Power BI here. Sign in. So we just re released a content pack, like I said, where we ship a bunch of um, reports that are pre-made. You don't have to make them. And they go across the areas of resource management, project management, and portfolio management. So I'll just show you a couple examples here. Um, so for example, if we go to portfolio, you get these really great dashboards that look super professional. They're all built and connected to your project data. So your project online data is already connected in the background. And it's showing you all the key metrics. They're interactive. So if I just wanted to look at projects that are in the execution phase, it will filter just by clicking. It'll filter all the metrics again 
like it did uh, with this embedded report in the home page. Um, another kind of cool report, and there's a bunch of these, are looking at projects based on location. It integrates with a, a map control, for example. So if I wanted to look at what's going on in France, I click on that, zooms into France, and then shows me the, the projects that are they're based out of France. So this is just kind of scratching the surface of all the features available in Project Online, which is part of Office 365. Um, I'd encourage everybody to go take a look at what else is available, but also keep in mind that it's, it's okay to start simple and sort of add functionality, layer on functionality as you grow in maturity. So thanks everybody for coming.